Segment three, Golden Black Live, Landon Feichter, happy to have you here. Absolutely. I'm glad that you're here. Appreciate and Stacy Clarity, we're always happy to have Stacy on. And uh, Landon, if you go to our website, he writes a, a column each week or each Friday, kind of heading into each football game. And, and we appreciate that. Of course, Landon has a uh, uh, former Purdue football player. His last year of eligibility was 2013. We got pictures of you scoring your your college, your touchdown at 34-yard return against oh, yeah. Eastern Kentucky. That was a good moment, I bet. Oh, there's, I mean. Do you still dream about that? I mean, getting in the end zone <laughs> in college football? I actually just saw the picture on my phone. I still have a picture yeah. of him, that picture. Yeah. Right <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture. Yeah, no, it's a pretty cool picture. Um, I mean, it just takes you back to the moment. I remember when I was having interviews after the game, I was just, I kind of blacked out. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. It was my first career interception. And, um only touchdown I had, and it was it was a pretty cool experience. All right, but take us through the play. I mean, because uh, and I don't remember if the ball you caught the ball on the was it a, was it on the was it a on the flat or was it over the middle? I can't remember. Uh, take, I think it was. You, a, you, you uh, know darn well what it is because you remember the whole <laughs> thing. So go ahead. It was a uh, I think it was a slant to the wideout. Okay. And um, Josh Johnson was the one who was covering him, and somehow the ball got tipped up in the air a little bit, and. Um, just kind of instincts popped in. Oh, that's right. It was a tip. It was yeah. a tip ball, and off you went. Yeah. Yeah. And what yard line were you on when you knew this if is going? Oh, oh, that you were scoring. In? You could say, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to score here." Uh, man, it was probably the goal line. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the goal line. <laughs> yeah, a fun moment for anybody. I, I was thinking of. I think the last. Uh, because you joined a Frank Duong, who was a walk-on mm -hmm. in a rare, you know, the two of you having that opportunity to do that. That's an amazing thing in its own right that you that you go from that and then you, you score and, and you obviously were a big contributor on those teams as well. All right, you we the weekly column uh, that you write, Stacy. We've already had the conversation. She's a tough editor, which I couldn't <laughs> agree more. But that's good. Uh, what have you learned from doing that? I mean, in terms of trying to put your thoughts on paper each week in a difficult season. I mean, it's not right. been a, not been a, a not been an easy road for anybody covering Purdue football. Well, I know my uh, writing skills are not <laughs> up to par. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, it's really fun. It's fun to go back and it's fun to kind of relive those moments. And um, when we talk about topics, I'm, I'm kind of just going back to um, the, the thoughts I had as a player and um, I'm kind of reliving it. And it's it brings it back. It brings the feeling back of being a player again because I've been out of the game for too long. Yeah. Um, but no, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think the point of us doing those things is because you guys pr provide a perspective we don't have because mm -hmm. we weren't there in those moments, obviously, um, just kind of after the fact. Uh, but to put people in the locker room, I think it's really cool. And the one you had for today, you were on the last team. I mean, Purdue's in this situation again. You know, three and six, got to win the last three to be able to get to a bowl game. And you were in that situation in 2012. And you had talked about it in the column, and people need to read it, obviously, at goldenblack.com. But at a couple key moments, even before you guys won the three in a row, in the locker room, right? I mean, can you just maybe just tell people about it's it matters when people speak up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we after the Ohio State game, it was a very close game, um, lost in overtime, and we had somebody step up who you wouldn't necessarily think would, mm -hmm. and um, it kind of just grabbed a lot of the players' attention um, because it was something that was unusual for that player, and you could tell that guys caught on to that and kind of tried building off of that. And then you go to the Minnesota game, and I said in the column that we had a guy who kind of interrupted Coach Hope and mm -hmm. went up in front of the team and um, kind of spoke passionately with everybody and broke us down. And um, unfortunately, the following week, we didn't get the win with Penn State. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, it was just those things that weren't necessarily happening until we knew that our backs were against the wall and we mm -hmm. had to come out swinging. You know, changing the mindset and being able to, to turn something around, and it hasn't under even in your your senior year where you play with a new coach and coach Daryl Hazel hasn't turned it around the way you have but there but there's been a learning process in all of this I mean what taking it in what has been your takeaway in terms of the experience of struggling from times yes you, you did win those last three games in 2012 and get to a bowl game but your coach was dismissed at the end so what did you what did you learn on all what have you kind of said this is something that really has resonated with me in my personal life uh, you kind of learn who you are when when you lose, um, yeah. and we lost a coach, yeah. and so you go through a lot of a lot of adversity with that, and um, you kind of you can kind of tell what kind of person you are and what the team will be um, when they go through a change like that, just like the 
the current team right now with yeah. Coach Hazel and Coach Parker. Um, so for me personally, uh, I mean, it was tough. I was a big Coach Hope fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, just kind of made me go through the adversity and learn a, lo- a lot about myself through that way. Mm-hmm. Do you learn good things always? Uh, no, not necessarily all good things. Um, you find yourself making up excuses a little mm-hmm. bit, um, which I think is natural. Um, when you get used to a, uh, a leader on your team and you go to a new leader, mm-hmm. um, there's things that are obviously will be changed. Right. Um, things you may agree with, things you may not agree with, and um, it's not always easy, um, but you gotta kind of just have to buy into the program, um, whether you agree with it or not, and um, kind of learn a lot about yourself through that. I would guess that would be hard though, right? I mean, especially for if we're talking about just a coaching situation. Because you said a lot of these guys really liked Danny Hope mm-hmm. for the way he did things, and it was kind of the way he did things that got him yeah. let go. But, I mean, there was a reason that you guys really liked him. So how do you shift gears and then follow somebody else when you were so – because I feel like there was an emotional response right. when he got fired that maybe <clears throat> maybe or maybe what wasn't the same with this change. But mm-hmm. how, do you, how do you adjust? How do you do that? I guess you just have to. You know yeah. that it's for the good of the team. And, right. Um, it's it's a lot easier when your teammates are doing it as well and you have your mm-hmm. teammates to kind of hold you around the shoulder and right. you're holding them around the shoulder. So it's it's a lot easier to do with teammates than just yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd, everybody kind of leaned towards each other uh, when there was a chance for that. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the program and, 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 and it's, it's struggled to win games. It doesn't mean that, the, like I said, there's been a lot of good people produced from this program, and, and whether it's been winning football to the level that you would have wanted or anyone else. But what do you think now, if you were going to advise in this situation, say, what, what does this program need to get to? The, is, it, is it truly a talent issue? Is it a, is it a, a combination of things? What, what moves it forward with this next person, in your view? You know, I think it's a combination of things. I, I mean, I think we have the talent to win. Um, I mean, you look at the last three weeks, we've either been winning or we've been tied at halftime um, with some respectable teams. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just a belief thing. And, you know, that's something that Coach Parker's touched on a lot. And, um, I mean, I touched on it in one of my columns that a buddy of mine was crying during one of Coach Parker's speech. Mm-hmm. And he said it, things are just different. And you can get that vibe through the whole team um, that things are just different. Um, not saying that Coach Hazel could never do that with us, but – um, I think it's just a belief. People, you need to believe in yourself before you're able to, you're, you're able to go out there and just have success on the field. You know what, what happens in that dynamic, which is kind of interesting, because most really good Division One football players have had success in high school. They're used to winning. Right. I, mean, I guess you, you had your your share of winning when Sandlot ball on all the way and up. And when that doesn't happen in college, does that is that a tough, tough thing to overcome mentally? Is that where is that where some of that comes from, do you think? Because most of these guys are good talented. They led their teams to victories before they got here. For me, it was tough. I remember we, lo- yeah. when we lost against um, Notre Dame at home. I remember going to my up to my parents after the game. and I mean, I was upset because we kept losing, and uh, I wasn't used to it. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was hard to adjust um, going from high school when you're the leader on the team and yeah. you're winning – game after game after game to um, maybe going six and six or uh, seven and six or whatever record you go. Um, so, I mean, you just you just have to rally behind each other again. I mean, just lean on each other for support again because, like you said, everybody had success and most guys have had successful high school careers. Um, and when you don't do that, you, you kind of just need to remind yourself what the, the, the feeling of winning is and that um, – because it can get it can get very easy to get used to losing, uh, which is what I think we kind of went through a little bit. Where you don't when you don't have that winning feeling, it's it's hard to get it back. Yeah. How does that happen in these last three games for these guys? With the. How do they win? How do they win? Belief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're here to solve everything. Right? <laughs> Isn't that not. why we brought you on the show? I mean, come on, Landon. <laughs> no, I I think they just have to get that belief i mean they're they're talented enough to win they've proved it last three weeks that they can hang with teams that Mm -hmm. um most people would count them out of yeah um so i mean get an early lead and sustain the lead after the halftime i mean that's been the biggest problem is coming out of half yeah um not being able to uh, keep up with the teams Mm -hmm. and um that's something that they just need to 
make their focus on. It's always an interesting dynamic for me for offense versus defense because obviously you're on one team, but you're doing your own things, obviously, you know. So the offense is, you know, scores 28 points in the first half last week and ultimately the defense allows 44 and it's not enough. You know, yeah. I mean, how do you how did you find to support each other and not blame when things aren't going well? Sometimes it was difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. Um, being on the sideline when when you have to go back on the field when the offense is struggling, uh, you can I mean, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> um, you kind of start blaming, but you know, that's not what it's about and um, when when teammates hear that, that's when people got to step up and make it known that that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. Because when the offense is, strugg is struggling, the defense may be doing good. When the defense is struggling, the offense is there to pick us up. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it, you're kind of divided a little bit, but on Saturdays, everything comes into one. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite uh, stories, as I recall, and I hope I'm right on this, and on Gold and Black, that we had, I think we did a drawing with you with all the all the uh, Injuries, all the parts yeah. of your body that were. Not mangled, but you had you had how, first. How how is your health after playing football? I have not had an injury since. <laughs> okay, that's we had the picture, and this was the this was in twelve, I believe, because you got hurt in twelve and then came back and played yeah. after you had the pick six, and you get hurt a couple games later, as I recall. Was this the two broken hands, broken leg? Oh yeah, this was. I think this was in thirteen. <laughs> oh, was it? Um, yeah, I think that is the the game when I broke yeah. my ankle against okay. Indiana State. Okay, so the, okay, so I was Because uh, as you correct. can tell, he has braces on his hands also. So what's that, I mean, did that get frustrating for you in terms of, uh, or in you, I mean, it's amazing to me that you, you got back and played uh, in parts in those seasons and, and got back to a level of saying, is it truly a focus and never say, never say die or you're not gonna count me out type? Or is that come in from maybe from the walk-on perspective? What got you through some of that? Yeah, I just think that's the way I've always been, not necessarily the walk-on. Um, I mean, I've always said, and it's a cheesy quote, that pain's the weakness leaving the body. And there is a difference between being injured and being hurt. Um, a lot of the injuries I had, I, I kind of just said that I was hurt rather than injured, um, <laughs> which wasn't necessarily always the truth. That's always true, okay. Uh, no, I, I, never, I never wanted to miss a game. Yeah. I always wanted to be out there with, with my brothers on the field and um, being on the sidelines or... Uh, during a game or being on the sideline during practice was, I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than that. Yeah, no question. I just think it's late. I just so remember, like, you didn't want anybody to know that you had two broken hands. I did not. I did not want anybody to know the, about the broken hands. Um, I think it was released from Coach Hazel uh, through something. I think and it was the Tuesday press yeah, conference. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and as I recall. Because we had heard about it before. Like yeah. somebody had told us, and we're like, oh. And so I knew I was talking to you that week. Uh -huh. But then he, like, spoiled it in advance. And I was like, well. Yeah. How did you deal with it? Because I mean, a, a, as a parent of a, a daughter that was a high school level soccer player, it would have been just like you would never. We always were worried that she would never disclose if she got had a concussion or whatever. <laughs> uh, how did you uh, keep. How are your parents and all this? Because I, I know how moms can be sometimes. Uh, how does that? Uh, they wanted. Did they instill that in you to go do it, or is that a, is that a Landon Feichter uh, attribute on your own? That is a Landon Feichter and my dad. Okay. My mom. My mom. I don't. Even, you just didn't tell her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, my mom. After I, I had an injury in high school, she was she was done. Oh yeah. She was yeah, done with like... the football, but always supportive. But. Uh, was no, that, that when was you had like a ruptured kidney or whatever that was? Lacerated spleen. Oh okay, yeah, nothing. So uh, just a flesh wound. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Like that's a little mom over the edge thing. Yeah. I get that. No, but that was always me and my dad. Uh, I, I told my dad about the two broken hands before anybody else. And um, and what was his advice? His advice was to wrap him up if I could and play. <laughs> he said if you if you truly think you can do it, go yeah. out there and play. And I truly thought I can do it. Yeah. Good. But you could until you broke your. <laughs> <laughs> Until I broke the leg, yeah. <laughs> because, and again, you it was, that was partially blamed because of the hands. Oh, uh, there was a little bit of blame for it, yeah. I adjusted my tackling a little bit and kind of foot got stuck. That was gross. I'm writing yeah. down your pains. After all the week we've been through and on a number of different fronts, uh, no matter how you, where you are politically, I like that I like that pain comment. I'm going to use that one, Daria. you got to remember <laughs> that, whether it's mental pain or physical pain from that standpoint. All right. <laughs>
your day job outside of this now in, in logistics business, working in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and uh, and you said it's in terms of that, what did you? What was that uh, great Purdue degree that you got that kind of helped you get to this situation? And, and what what are, what's what do you like about this this gig on the front end? Uh, I majored in sociology and yeah. I minored in organizational leadership. Yeah. Um, I like the competitiveness of the job, so I'm kind of logistics sales broker, yeah. brokering freight, and uh, it's very competitive. So it kind of gives me a little bit of uh, that com competitive sugar that I always yeah. need. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's it's a nice job. Yeah. And is, go ahead. I just want to keep going on the job thing, though. But is football still in your future some way, or do you hope? Because I mean, obviously, you were with the Browns, yeah. right? For right. when once you left here, and I think. Wanted to even maybe get into coaching some, I did too, right? So right. I mean, where is football and all of this for you right now? It's somewhere. <laughs> it's got. It's got to be somewhere. I, yeah. I think, and I just told uh, Sean Robinson last night. He called me, and I told him for the past two weeks, I think I've had a dream every day with something relating to football. Mm -hmm. Whether it was uh, just a couple of days ago, I had a dream that I was unathletic and I couldn't <laughs> run fast anymore. And um, I mean, I've been having dreams all the time. So mm -hmm. football, football is there somehow i mean that's mm -hmm. i kind of built my life around football for too long not to have something with it. i can think of if uh, for potential coaches schools on down the line you're going to be hard hard pressed to do a lot better than this guy in terms of a guy with experience and uh, the right stuff to do a good job with it. hey landon thank you so much for Absolutely. taking the time to join us and stacy as well we and always enjoy your perspective and uh, we can now pay you legally, so, which we didn't pay you <laughs> illegally at any point in time, but we sh we need to do something nice for you as well. But then again, we owe Stacy like 100 dinners because she comes on our post-game show every year, and I say that every week. Isn't hey, that Stacey. included in my salary? I thought It might be. If it's not, then shoot. It might be. It's not included in Landon's at this point. So <laughs> so anyway, we, we appreciate that. And make sure you do check it out because Landon, uh, with Stacy's help, uh, does a great job, but that's really added a lot to the site this year as we get into each uh, each. Uh, game week. All right, we want to thank our sponsors, Hilton Garden Inn, State Farm Agent Trent Johnson, uh, John Basham and Basham Reynolds, and of course, Triple uh, X for their sponsorship. And we want to also thank uh, Allie and Cami and uh, Kurt today for all their help. I know Gordon will be back next week. We'll be back next week with a mystery guest because it's a mystery because we don't have any we talked to him, maybe even ricardo allen maybe uh, you know ricardo well maybe you can get make sure you get a hold of him. i guess he <laughs> may be coming this week uh i know there's gonna be a lot of drew Brees and others will be here i don't know that drew's gonna appear on our show that we'd like to tell you that he is uh but uh, we'll have somebody we'll be back next week prior to the wisconsin game for golden black live so have a great week everybody thanks to all that uh, helped put this together and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week on golden black live